I've got a lot of thoughts about entertainment and culture war discourse. We'll talk about it more in just a second here. It's no secret that the majority of most entertainment today has more of what you would call a left-wing bias or a woke bias. It goes by several different names, but many directors, writers, producers of different video games and television series and movies and music, these entire industries, they're all filled with people who tend to have the same ideologies when it comes to their own worldview and how they see the culture. And... 95% of that is left-leaning or is woke. Now, depending on your own personal positions, this is either a good thing or a bad thing. For me, as a personal conservative, I disagree with all of that, and I don't personally want that in my entertainment. But other people may feel differently. Obviously, this world is made up of all kinds of people with all types of different perspectives. But I'm not here to t state the obvious. I'm here to talk about the discourse that has been taking place over the past decade or so when it comes to entertainment and the culture war, because I think the two are largely intertwined. A combination of social media, politics, and the culture war itself have all combined into this big, messy blob of discourse that has been seemingly nonstop for the past decade or so. And not only is it tiring... But I'm finding it very fascinating because for a lot of people, the solutions are fairly obvious. The most recent example is, and I made a video about this earlier, is the Barbie movie. The movie comes out, people go to see it expecting something, and then they get something different than what they expected. And then they feel negatively about what they got. They feel like they were fooled. They feel like the marketing presented something different than what the entirety of the movie was. But then you have people who absolutely love the movie beyond a shadow of a doubt going hardcore and actually trying to stand up and defend it. And there's a couple of different things about that. The first is that it's a movie. You're allowed to like or dislike whatever you want. You're allowed to review it. You're allowed to leave a bad Metacritic review. You're allowed to make videos about it however you feel, whether you love it to death or you despise it. It's just entertainment. That's how entertainment is made to be consumed. It can be loved and hated. But you've got several people who love a thing, who instead of just loving that thing and focusing on the positivity surrounding that thing that they love, they always have to go to the negativity. And the negativity gets them so badly that they can't help themselves but engage in discourse with those people who they disagree with. And it gets nasty. They're always nasty with it. It always involves name-calling and gaslighting and just horrible treatment of somebody who they don't even know. I've run into this several times on Facebook to the point where I'm always hesitant to leave comments. I leave comments just for the fun of it, just to express an opinion. But I should have known from years of being on social media that that's still not an acceptable thing to do. It's really disappointing to me that people can't just enjoy what they want and dislike what they want to dislike. If you dislike something, you're not allowed to say it because there's so many people that like it. I ran into this years before the culture war. I would often comment on different friends' things saying, well, I feel a little differently about something. You know, just expressing an opinion, not trying to be overly negative, but it comes across as negative. I had a friend's family member blow up at me on Facebook because of this. It was very awkward. And um, that's when I realized, I was like, okay, well, at the end of the day, you are allowed to feel however you want about something positive or negative. If somebody has a problem with your negativity, that's not your fault inherently. That's their fault. They want to cultivate a culture of positivity, but that's not the reality of the world we live in. We, we live in a world where people are free to express positivity and negativity, and thank goodness that they are. Because if they weren't, then you wouldn't be able to express your negativity towards something that you don't like and you have a problem with. It just bothers me that people can't be mature enough to handle a negative opinion. They really can't. I spend a lot of time on Bounding Into Comics. You'll often see me in the comment section of Bounding Into Comics. And there's a lot of resident trolls on that website who are constantly trying to berate 
and borderline harass the people in the comments section, calling them all sorts of names and the writing staff. People just trolling, basically, just classic trolling. And too many people fall for it, and I've often pointed this out. But what is laughable to me is just the waste of time that it is for them to be engaging people who are all roughly on the same page. Why would you go knowingly? For the sake of your own, for lack of a better term, mental health, why would you go knowingly into a circle of people that disagrees with your overall worldview and has a worldview that you should at this point expect to just insult them and talk down to them and basically just egg them on? If that's fun to you, then I think you have a serious mental issue. Because nobody wants to hear somebody coming in and trying to tear them apart. If they're spending time collectively together being negative about something, they're having a good time being negative about that thing. It's you coming in that's trying to ruin it. And that's what bothers me about a lot of this discourse is people don't know when to stay in their lane. Back in the day... Before the internet, people used to know when to stay in their lane, because if you didn't, it often got violent. But nowadays, because people can hide behind a screen, they just say whatever they want. And this behavior is increasing exponentially, which is why a lot of people have just completely exodused from social media as a whole, because they don't want to put up with the vast majority of discourse that's taking place because it gets so toxic and so personal. We're talking death threats. We're talking people saying rude, nasty things in DMs, taking it off the actual thread, going into somebody's DMs, and just being ridiculous. We're seeing all that sort of behavior because people are just largely unhinged online. You wouldn't do these things in the real world. If you show up at somebody's house saying some of the things that you do, you're going to get hurt. You don't do that. You know when to disengage. And you wouldn't, disen you wouldn't engage with people who have opinions that upset you. You would just completely disengage. And the fact that there was an entire generation of people and that we're raising generations of people who don't know how to disengage is very concerning to me. I have not been on this earth as long as many other people. I'm only 31. But I've been on this earth long enough and I've been on social media long enough to understand when you need to log out, when you need to just move on from a discourse that is taking place. You need to just not say anything. If you've got a group of people who are saying things that you don't like about something that you do like or somebody that you do like, you need to learn when to ignore it. You just need to. And there are so many people who have no self-control in this regard and this happens all the time in entertainment circles, all the time, all the time. Any given comment section, you'll have people who are for something, and then you'll have one or two people who say something negative, and everybody loses their mind. <coughs> Excuse me. And it just, it results the same way every single time, and it's just cyclical. Which is why a lot of people leave social media. A lot of people unfriend people on social media that they were friends with in real life. And that's the part that discourages me is that we're seeing friends and family divide over this type of stuff. Friends and family divide over political opinions, over entertainment opinions. And it's really disconcerting because people are feeling like they're, they don't know each other anymore. Because people are adopting different positions based on entertainment, politics, etc. The culture war is causing so much divide in this country, it's not even funny. And I'm not making a blanket call to unity. I know that that likely won't happen for years. I'll be lucky if it happens in my lifetime. You know, it's very depressed. I've got a very depressing outlook of the future. I don't see this thing getting better anytime soon. The only thing I can recommend to people is stick with the people who are mature and nuanced in opinion enough to understand that you can disagree peacefully and still remain friends and family. Those are the people you hold on to. The people who can't, unfortunately, you got to let them just float down the river and enter into the rapids for themselves because even though you're trying to tell them that the rapids are there, they're not going to see it. They're angry at you. They're emotional. They're, they're filled with just this overwhelming desire to be right and to 
you know, be the center of attention, to be narcissistic, to be however they feel they need to be about a given topic. And nothing you say or do is going to change them. So you just need to let them do their thing. And if you're a Christ follower, pray for them because they'll probably need it. Because oftentimes I find that the people who are engaging in discourse and breaking bread over the smallest things in entertainment or politics, they're not mentally well. If if they are yelling and screaming at you because you have an opinion different to theirs, they need help. They absolutely need help. If if they don't like the fact that you were negative about the Barbie movie, they need help. They absolutely need help. Or whatever the subject matter happens to be, no matter what it is. Because at the end of the day, there's a little thing called nuance and perspective, all right? And you need both when it comes to discourse about entertainment. It's just entertainment. You're allowed to feel however you want about it. You can feel positive. You can feel negative. As somebody who talks about, discusses, and reviews media, I want people to understand that what I put out there is simply my own thoughts and opinions. I am not any authority on whether something is objectively good or bad in media. There is no such thing as true objectivity when it comes to overall entertainment. Oh, this is truly good, this is truly bad. No, it's going to vary from person to person, from group to group. And that's the fun of it. Or at least it used to be. It used to be fun. People used to have fun discussions about what they liked and disliked, and they used to be more peaceful most of the time. But in this day and age, people are rabid about their entertainment. They are absolutely frothing at the mouth about their entertainment. That's why there are certain fan bases out there who are absolutely toxic. For many years, it was shows like Rick and Morty and Steven Universe and um, some of these other some of these other entertainment mediums and shows and programs and games. People who, if you ever said something even remotely negative but polite, they would just tear into you. Because these there are cults that are built up within these fan bases. They have cult followings. And people are emotionally attached to these things when they really need to they really need to grow up, especially the people who are my age. I can't imagine people who are in their 30s engaging in this type of discourse and tearing people down because they didn't like something. If somebody doesn't like something that I like, I just go, well, I mean, I disagree, but whatever. You're allowed to feel how you want. I'm allowed to feel like I want. Let's go get coffee. If you don't want to go get coffee, you want to, you want to completely ruin our relationship over this, fine. I'll find somebody else who has more nuance and is more mature. Hope you get the help you need. So it's crazy to me that we have come to this point, and it has been a long time coming up to this point where even the slightest discourse with entertainment is just world-ending for some people. It really is. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that the people producing entertainment have taken a side in the culture war where they really shouldn't. Entertainment used to be neutral ground. It used to be its own sphere. But now it's being tied into the greater culture war, and it depresses me. I want to enjoy entertainment again and not have to worry about underlying themes and messages, but oftentimes I can't help myself because I can't enjoy something if it's going to yank me out of that world and out of that experience and try to remind me that we're in a culture war and that there's a group of people fighting for diversity, equity, inclusion, so on and so forth, and, and being having that messaging rammed into my head constantly by multiple different things, even if it's once or twice in a given project, it still annoys me. I, I don't enjoy that. I can't enjoy that entertainment the same as something that doesn't include that. And you'll see lots of people saying, no, but entertainment was always like that. Entertainment was always ideological. Entertainment often dealt with political issues, but it didn't take sides on a political issue. It just presented it how it was. Maybe it presented two sides. Nowadays, it usually only presents the left-leaning side, and that's what people criticize because they don't see the nuance of both sides. They just see one side saying this is good because we own the entertainment. We produce the entertainment. So what they will do is they will go to the independent side of entertainment and look for people who are not doing that or for people who are doing uh, what aligns with their personal political beliefs. But I think, and as far as I'm concerned, I just want entertainment that's neutral. I don't want to think about politics at all. I don't want to think about ideology at all outside of 
the ideology of that specific fictional world that has nothing to do with mine. I want to escape all of that. I don't want to think about all that. That's why I'm going to turn on my game console or turn on my TV or turn on my phone because I don't want to think about the real world. And I understand there's a lot of people who feel the same way. And so my overall point here is with entertainment and the culture war discourse, I think a lot of us need to learn to be more mature about it and learn when to disengage because ultimately it's a circular argument. You're not going to change somebody's mind if you like something and they don't or if they like something and you don't. You can express why you dislike something and there's a constructive way to do it. I'm all for it. I think that that's part of the fun of entertainment. It is fun to me to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of a given piece of entertainment. But there are lots of people who treat it as religion, and if you insult their religion, then you must pay. And that's terrible. That's really terrible. Pe those people need help. They need to find something better to live by. They need to find God sincerely instead of making their God entertainment. So, in conclusion, I think that, unfortunately... We're not going to see this end for a long time. I think the only way that we see this culture war die down is if social media stops becoming a major thing. If social media stops becoming a major thing, if there are less outlets for people to make comments and have discourse, and I don't want to see that because I like people to be able to comment on things and discuss things. That's why I have comments on my videos. But because the discourse has gotten so out of hand for over a decade, I can easily see a lot of these websites. Even YouTube has changed its comments policy. You know, you have way more control over what types of comments are acceptable. Back in the day, if you remember old YouTube, it used to be as savage as savage gets. Same with internet lobbies, same with all these things. And these companies are now starting to overreach and get more censorious because people are just so out of control. People can't control themselves. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that you've got both adults and kids interacting with each other. So you've got people who are mature, but you've also got people who are immature, and they're constantly having a flowing discourse that is just disjointed because the kids haven't yet learned how to interact properly with the adults, and the adults just scoff at the kids and it's completely imbalanced. They need to be more separate until the kids are mature enough to engage in that sort of discourse. Kids should not be in discourse online, which is why you've most things for kids don't have comment sections for safety and for the fact that people are just unhinged online. So now at the end of the day, there's going to be a – I don't know if we'll ever go back to the way things were. I hope we do. By God's grace, I sincerely hope we can go back to – just more peace of mind and better discourse and people just feeling better about entertainment and about culture. But this thing is just completely ongoing and I don't see an end in sight. So let me know what you think down in the comments below about entertainment and the culture war discourse and this seemingly endless cycle. And I will see you guys in the next video. This has been Super Koopa TV. Remember, Hollywood doesn't respect you. God bless. Have a good one. Peace.